Hey guys, thank you for stopping by for my stitching update. It's been a pretty productive week for me here. I have five whips to share with you today, plus some thoughts on what I want to get done over the coming week. And let's just go ahead and jump in with whip number one. First up, we have the Prairie Schoolers at Prairie Garden. I started this back in 2019 and I am on track for finishing. Yeah, so here's where it was last time. And here's where we are today. I have finished the daffodils, thankfully. They were a lot of fun. I actually, I was expecting to, I'm getting towards the end, so I just want to be done, but I really enjoyed working on these thicker leaves compared to like these where they're only a single width. They're a little less fun. This is like, you just kind of get to do a bunch of rows of like two or three stitches each. And for some reason, I just enjoy stitching on that. So this one was really fun. Um, yeah, I probably should have finished this border, but whatever. Um, as you can see though, it's on track. Like that for me is so important just because I can now feel the momentum. I told you that when I hit about 85% on a project, I just want to get done. Well, I'm at 83% done and yeah, I'm like so ready to just finish and enjoy this. Um, I'm going to frame it. So I'm really happy with it. So my next, I'm going to do this motif next and then finish up in this upper right hand corner. Uh, my plan is to hopefully get this rose knocked out this week. That's, I'm basically giving myself two weeks to get this done. So hope that happens. It'd be really great. I pulled back out Modern Folk Embroidery's Ave Maria, the Annunciation, and this one I didn't really, I pulled out because I hadn't really been working on it considering I started it this year and that's the problem with you have too many new starts it's easy like in the first couple weeks they're really exciting because oh it's a new start and then it turns into yet another one of my whips and I'm up to almost 20 I haven't actually counted them I probably should but I don't want to know how many projects I've started and not finished so I'm not going to do that right now but anyway I pulled this one out it is a monochromatic piece and I had been working up here in Gabriel. Here's where I was last time. And here's where we're at today. As you can see, I have actually finished all of Gabriel's wings, which I'm really grateful for. I, I enjoy, okay, obviously these are a bunch of straight lines. I enjoy the lettering. I'm enjoying this. I really want to work up at this border, but the wings were just, I don't want to say they were frustrating, but what I'm trying to do is not carry a little X's behind all the few amounts of white here because that negative space is what's creating the look. And I just, I'm worried about the blue showing through all my linen. So I've been trying to avoid that. And it just means that this had been a little bit on some tedious stitching. Meanwhile, I was like, oh, I'm really excited. So I actually started here. So this is uh, Maria is over here. I don't know which direction I'm gonna go now that I have finished like basically above his waist. I think I'm gonna work up in here for a bit just because again, the, uh, the border is calling to me. That's what I wanna work on. But I am really, really happy that, uh, did I mention getting all this done? Because I, I had basically like a chunk here and a chunk here and they weren't really connected. So they didn't look like anything to me. Like I can look at the pattern and see it. But when I'm staring at my project, I wasn't really like, okay, I know it's a wing. How does this all connect? So I'm really happy to be where I can see it. It looks fantastic. And I am gonna pull this one back out in October, but not next week. <laughs> Speaking of new starts, this is Custom Crafts Autumn Chapel, which I had started last week as my I guess, seasonal new start. It sounded like a good excuse at the time. I mean, look at the colors on this. So here's where it was last time. And this is where it is today. I have to apologize. I know that it doesn't look like a lot on camera, at least what I can see on my camera right now. Even in person, it doesn't look like a lot. It looks like a dark blob because right now the most common color I've used is 3371, a dark brown, uh, 3799, dark gray, and then 500, which is a darkish green, which 
kind of is predominating down here. But the problem is it means that there's not a lot of differentiation going on, so it makes it kind of hard to see. Um, and this is a full coverage piece, so obviously as I fill in, it's gonna become more obvious. The other thing is this is only using 40 colors, um, which I'm really pleased with because I didn't, I don't wanna be doing endless amounts of confetti. I'm actually being able to jump, like this amount of parking is actually doing a pretty good job at the moment for where I am with me being able to do a decent amount of stitches. I am doing pretty much trying to complete a square at a time. So, um, and these, because of the way that it's charted, like these squares are not actually, like the edge squares here, they're only four wide and eight tall. So I've only completed like, actually like two full complete hundred stitch grid squares. But I think it's about five, Kennedy out. It's roughly 500 are done on here so far. And there's, I don't know if you can see, but I do have a bunch of like golden leaves are gonna be coming up right here. So I'm really excited for that. And I'm just kind of doing a roughly diagonal across the page. The page break is only like, it's right here. Um, so not far down the uh, fabric at all. And I'm probably not gonna keep, I'm gonna do the diagonal across the top and then come back and do the bottom. I think. I, I don't know, I might change my mind. I always reserve the right to change my mind because it's my hobby, I can do what I want. But in the meantime, I'm really enjoying this one. The full coverage on 18 count is actually nicer than I thought it would be. My, um, the coverage of two threads over one honestly is pretty great. So I don't have a lot, really have almost no show through considering I'm using white Ada. So I'm happy with it and yeah. My sampler for this week was Modern Folk Embroidery. It's a family patchwork sampler. And I have resumed working in the January card just because I think I would like to go ahead and get one part real, like full and complete. Getting to that point with um, Fruit of Plenty was really motivating for me. So here's where it was last time. And here's where it is today. As you can see, I had started working over. So January actually ends like right about here. So I just started filling in this motif, going across the top a little more. So I have half of H. Um, I don't know, not a lot to say about it. It This one does stitch up faster than Fruit of Plenty for me. So in that sense, even though I did not put a huge amount of time into it this week, this is probably four lengths of thread in total. I'm really happy with where I got to. So it's, it's pretty good. Um, two thirds of the way through the January card, which means that I'm 6% complete in total for this project, which is definitely nice considering, again, I haven't put as much time into this one as I think I originally thought I would when I started it. Probably because I have, let's go back to too many new starts this year. And I'm not gonna change a thing about it because I do love my projects. So this one, it's, yeah, like, I mean, pretty, pretty straightforward. And afterwards, I'll probably go down and finish April. But I don't have to decide that now. My focus piece for this week was Mirabilia's Autumn Queen. I had been kind of aiming for, she's still on my plate for, I want to finish her this year. But the only way for me to do that is actually I'm going to have to start really buckling down and focusing and getting her done. So here's where she was last time. And this is where we're at today. I started doing this ribbon across her lap, finally. Um, so I actually kind of found the top of the skirt here into her lap. There's more purple up here, but it is actually, it feels a little nice that there is some definition going on here for me personally. And also just to see the green continue. I. I don't even understand how these colors go together. So whatever color chronic this is, this is 780. This is 730. I'm pretty sure this one is 780. I'd have to go back and double check. But either way, like if I put them next to each other, I would say there's no way this works together to be a green that makes sense on this ribbon. But and then I look at it, I'm like, yeah, it makes total sense. So really loving had the effect. I have also started filling up her cloak on this side just because the very edge over here and since I got to the edge over here I'd like to kind of counterbalance it and then I'm giving myself permission to not worry about the whisper for a while so one of the reasons that this is not 
as complete as I might expect based on the area coverage. It's 45% done. But there's a big hole here. There's still a big hole here. And I am getting better with the Whisper. Like if I use exactly nine inches and I use a size 24 needle, I can get through without shredding it too badly. I just, because there's such short lengths, I feel like I'm forever starting and finishing it. I don't like threading the needle with it. I love the effect. So I'm actually gonna say like, the effect is fantastic and I just don't want to get hung up on feeling like I have to punish myself doing the whisper. So I figure if I do a couple links here and there, it'll be great. But in the meantime, I realized the other problem. I was showing her to my husband who's like, isn't she looking great? And he's like, kind of stared at me. Like, she? I'm like, yeah, her hand. We've already had this discussion. This is her hand. Oh, that's her hand. And I'm like, okay, she's a little disembodied. Like actually, so I know, Way back in one of my old videos, I'm pretty sure I'd said that what it, my thought was this was fill at the bottom because I tend to get bogged down in miles of skirt and then my marriabilities don't get finished. Problem here is I still got bogged down in miles of skirt and I have no lady. She has no head. She's like literally this is waist down. So I'm going to go ahead and just fill up, not like not complete, but just get, basically get to her head, have her look like a body and then fill back down. Cause realistically, I think I, when I talked about this before, my thought was I was gonna fill in all these beads going up. I am not. I know this, there's some bead roping going on. The bead roping is gonna be the last thing to get it done anyway. So I might as well go to the top, finish top and then work my way back down and call it good. So that is where I am with Autumn Queen. And again, she's gonna be my focus piece. So I've, probably every week, from now to the end of the year before I get her done. And hopefully I get her done before the end of the year. I have three months. There's no reason that I can't get her finished. Right? Right. One of the things I found in stitching this week was having planned out that I was gonna touch five projects was really helpful for keeping me almost focused. And it's five. I didn't pick like how much I needed to focus on any one of them. If I had decided that I was gonna do, spend the majority of my time working on say a prairie garden and basically get like 200 stitches on everything else, I would have called that good enough. I did not pick a specific like amount of time or amount of stitches for any project. Just I wanted to touch all five, but I was gonna let within those five, what I wanted to do drive what I spent my time on. And I think that worked out really well. So I have for this week planned out basically another five pieces that I'm gonna work on. And first of those are gonna be the Prairie Garden and Autumn Queen, as evidenced by the fact I literally just said that in my video, but also these have, for me now, I realize this one is close enough to the end. I want to work on it, like it's so close and I just would like to be done, it'd be fantastic. And this one, because I would like to also get it done as my oldest Mirabilia piece hanging around, but also the fact that it's a seasonal one honestly tickles my fancy a bit. So I think that would be fantastic. I then picked out like, well, what else do I want to work on? And the answer is I definitely want to go back to the Fruit of Plenty. I have just really, really enjoyed working on this one. And with only the two colors, it's, easy to carry around. So I do spend time away from my house, but we're enough time and it, sitting in the car waiting for kids that I need something that's portable. So this fits the bill hundred percent. So the other part that I realized would be kind of nice is I have, like I said, roughly 20 whips plus or minus like two, well, it's somewhere 18 to 20 close enough. And I realized that some of them I just am not drawn to, but they're there. They start, I've started them. What I've gotten done I like, but I need to kind of buckle down and do them. So for the month of October, each week, I am going to pick two projects that haven't been seen recently and work on them. So first up is going to be Ink Circles Tapestry. And this is where I'm at with it. I, oh, this one got picked for this week, precisely because its colors really make me think of autumn. So I thought this would be a really nice, like solely for the colors. I do not love stitching uh, mandalas. I have learned that from this project. So I don't know that I'll ever do another one like this one, but I am glad that I have it. So I'm gonna try to get a little bit of progress on it this week. 
I feel like I'm in a bit of a full coverage mood based on the work that I was doing on Autumn Chapel. And then I was like, I enjoy doing the two strands over the 18 count. But I realized like, okay, I'd really kind of almost like to pull my hate back out. And it's been months and months and months. And these things don't stitch themselves. So time to pull out Winter Kiss. And this is, yep, where I got the two page finish. I haven't done a bit since then. And I do think that I'm gonna try for this one doing the typewriter method to go across the page. I do not have pattern keepers, so I'm literally doing this on paper, which is fine, but I kind of need a something to give me some structure. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that method a try and see how it goes on page three. I have a bonus piece, which is Mirabilia Designs, the Stargazer. And this one is solely because fall has shown up and the skies when they're not cloudy and rainy, which it's been a lot this week, have been just absolutely gorgeous. It's getting dark earlier. I do an evening walk every day. So it had gone from not seeing much because of when the sun was going down to now I'm seeing the stars again. So this one just kind of talked to me a little bit. I This one is a may or may not get to, but I figured I'd give myself a little bit of leeway and that could be a good thing. October is my husband's birthday month. Now, I am not gonna get this project done for this year, so I'm not even gonna attempt it, but I want to for next year. And my husband knows I make these videos, but he just not watch them all the way through, so I hope that I'm not ruining next year's birthday gift for him, because he does not know that I have this chart. This is Long Dog Sampler's Mick the Miller, and as you can see, it is a Sighthound silhouette with various little bits of like the white paws, the white tip of the tail. Well, I have three whippets and my male, he is a hundred percent, he's a hundred percent black except for he has like white on his toes and his face is all grayed out now. He's eight, like it's not age. His mother and father both have that same, like, I don't even know what you call the effect, but when he was a puppy, he looks like this very black so i want to basically make this for my husband for next year i don't know where he would put it this is as much for me as for him but argyle is his dog like i love all my dogs but since they're dogs and not children i can actually have preferences um we got argyle because my dog needed a friend so lulu was a mess as a only dog so we ended up getting argyle and to make her a better dog but it also turns out that argyle is my husband's dog like through and through they just they have a connection that he does not have with the other dogs we've had in the past that's what I have going on in stitching this week. I hope that you guys are having a good week with whatever you have going on, and I will see you next time. Bye!